Hi everyone, this is Exercise Science Research Reviews, and today we're going to talk a little bit about exercise and cardiac output. Today we're going to talk a little bit about what cardiac output is and how it's related to exercise and exercise performance. If you're interested in following along or reading a bit more, please check out the links uh, for the textbook that I use, as well as the research publication that we'll talk a little bit about at the end. Also, if you enjoy the video, make sure to like and subscribe, as well as check out some of the other videos uh, that I've done on exercise and research. So before we can talk a little bit about cardiac output, we first have to talk about stroke volume, which is essentially the total amount of blood volume that is pumped by your heart within each heartbeat. So to get this value, we first look at the total amount of blood that is in the heart before the pump, and then we subtract the total amount of blood left over after um, it essentially ejects the blood to the rest of your body. So that is pretty much looking at end diastolic volume minus end, st uh, end systolic volume. So what is cardiac output? Cardiac output is essentially the total volume of blood that is pumped by the ventricle per minute. And to get this value, we look at the stroke volume, which again is the total amount of vo uh, blood volume that is pumped per beat times your heart rate, which is the number of beats per minute. So for an average person at rest, we might expect something like 80 milliliters of blood is pumped per beat at rest, um, while a resting heart rate might be somewhere around 60 beats per minute. And the average cardiac output of an individual at rest would be somewhere in the range of four to five liters per minute. So just as a point of reference, because I think it's really fascinating, the average adult body has approximately five liters of blood in it. So what that means is, is that each cardiac uh, output, so the amount of blood that you pump through your body each minute is equivalent to the entire amount of blood that is in your circulatory system. So your heart is extremely efficient at getting the blood throughout your body. And it's really kind of just a feat of genius of the human physiology. And really, if we're impressed by the fact that, you know, our hearts can pump our entire body's worth of blood in a single minute, it's even more impressive to look at how much blood can be pumped throughout our circulatory system per minute when we are exercising. So as you can see here, um, an average sedentary individual might have a cardiac output of 20 liters per minute, while a endurance trained individual might have as much as 40 liters per minute of, uh, of uh, blood flow and cardiac output. These values are partially dependent on the amount of training you do, as you can see, based on sedentary and endurance, but it's also based on your body size. So a smaller body frame will have a lower cardiac output at rest and during exercise than a much bigger body frame. But again, kind of focus on the fact that even for the sedentary individuals, when they're exercising, they see a four plus fold increase in their total cardiac output. They are moving four times the amount of blood in their body through their heart per minute. So that's, that's pretty impressive. So how does uh, exercise lead to this astronomical increase in cardiac output? So again, cardiac output is made up of two components, the stroke volume, which is the total amount of blood volume that's moved per beat, as well as the total number of beats per minute. And as you can see, heart rate increases pretty linearly with exercise intensity. And that's something you probably notice when you go out and you work harder and you exercise, your heart rate and the number of beats uh, per minute that are done by your heart increases pretty linearly. However, stroke volume is something that increases at the beginning uh, as your heart uh, sympathetic nervous system causes your heart to contract more violently um, and kind of push more blood throughout your body. So in the beginning, they're kind of working synergistically. You're having more beats per minute and you're also having a stronger contraction and more movement of blood volume. However, in most individuals, stroke volume will actually plateau much sooner than heart rate. And the reason for this is, is because as heart rate increases, there is less time for the blood to pool in the heart 
And what that pooling of blood does in the heart is it actually extends and distends the heart and the chambers become a little bit larger. And because the heart is somewhat elastic, uh, a pooling of blood in the heart allows for a greater contraction outwards. However, as the heart rate increases, there's less time for the blood to come back to the heart and kind of pool, which means there's less distension of the heart ventricles, which also leads to a lesser stroke volume uh, contraction and therefore less blood volume to be pumped out with each beat as the beats per minute start to kind of outpace the capacity for the heart to refill. So that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed, again, please like, um, subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and uh, make sure to stick around or take a look at some of my other exercise science research reviews as well as my exercise science courses.